Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you products that I think are a little bit overhyped. And don't get this confused with my products I regret buying video. I like doing these videos and it seems like you guys really like watching these. I don't know if it's just because people want to see if there's products that I'm talking about that they actually really like. I feel like that's a little part of why these videos um, end up appealing to so many people but don't get this confused with my products I regret buying video because some of the products I'm going to talk about today I actually like but I don't think that they are worth the money or the price tag um, or they're just really hyped up for no particular reason if that makes sense products I regret buying I seriously regretted those products that they did not work for me and I did not like them but some of these products I do actually use I just feel like they are way overhyped so that is the realm of today's video and if you guys are interested in the products I'm going to talk about then just keep on watching. If I look a little bit ratchet I've been moving into our new house so you guys probably won't see this background for much longer um, but yeah that's why this isn't too you know popping today. First product I want to talk about is from NARS and these are actually two individual products but I just happen to have them in a duo and I think that they are both really overrated. So uh, first thing NARS Orgasm Blush and NARS Laguna Bronzer. Yes, I said it. I feel like so many people are going to butcher me for this, but um, the thing is, is that Orgasm is a pretty blush. It just doesn't have much color payoff, to be honest, though. Um, it, I feel like the reason it was so popular is because it was the first of its kind to kind of have that, like, golden sheen and give your cheeks kind of like a highlight. I feel like that's why so many people like this color. Um, it is a pretty color, but as far as, like, the quality of orgasm, I've had two orgasm blushes. I've had a single one and then one in this little duo, and they just don't seem to have the highest color payoff off. Um, so that's my beef with Orgasm. Uh, Laguna, honestly, I, again, I just don't feel like the color payoff is there. That's one swatch from Laguna. And I will say that it is a good universal color for a lot of different skin tones, but I think this bronzer is around like $42. And I can think of a couple other bronzers that are a little bit cheaper than that, that I feel like are much better quality than this one. So I just don't think the overall quality is there with the hype that is paired with these two products, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not saying that they're terrible because sometimes I will take this little duo when I travel and then I have blush bronzer both, but it's not my first choice. I know for a fact I'm going to literally be clawed in the eyeballs probably for this next thing, but I just have to say it because so many people are like, why don't you try using this with this foundation? and it just doesn't work for me and it's the beauty blender um i use the beauty blender for few things mainly i use the beauty blender for really thick products if a product is super thick uh, if a foundation is really heavy or cakey and i'm trying to get it to work better on my skin i will use a beauty blender but i do not understand why this is so popular when it absorbs like 80% of your product. I read this crazy statistic that the Beauty Blender absorbs a crazy amount of your product. I want to say it was over 80% of your product. That's my problem with the Beauty Blender is when I use this with foundation, I have to use almost twice the amount of foundation as I would if I used a regular foundation brush. With, um, for example, my Makeup Forever Ultra HD, I use about... Uh, two to three pumps of that with a brush, whereas with the Beauty Blender, I use about four to five pumps. I mean, I use quite a bit more, and it just seems like every time I use the Beauty Blender, I just don't love the way my makeup looks because I'm constantly having to layer on more makeup. Uh, but like I said, I do use this occasionally for um, really thick products like thick under eye concealer, thick foundation, and I also like using it sometimes whenever it is dry like this to just pat in concealer underneath my eye. I just don't love using it damp. There's just something about it, especially with concealer, when I try to blend out my concealer with a beauty blender, a damp beauty blender, it literally eats up all of the product underneath my eyes. It eats up my foundation. My eyes are completely bare. My eyes are just completely bare when I try to use a wet beauty blender under them. It's the craziest thing. So, 
I just don't understand the complete, you know, I guess I don't understand the people who are like, beauty blender for life. I can't use anything other than the beauty blender. You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand that. And I guess it's just the way my skin is or the way I am, but ain't feeling the beauty blender. This is something that I don't feel like is hyped about a lot in the beauty community, but it is in like the makeup artistry world. And it's Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream. Now you guys probably saw my review of the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. If you didn't, go check two videos back. You'll see it. Um, long story short, if you want a spoiler alert, I completely despised that foundation. It did not work for me. It was one of the worst foundations I have ever tried in my entire life. And if I had it here today, it would probably be my products I regret buying, but I actually sent it back. I mean, you guys know I do not send products back. That is not something that I ever do, but it was expensive and it was, I couldn't work with it. It was terrible. So I got Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream back around Christmas time in one of her Christmas sets. And this is just so raved about in the beauty world. Wayne Goss talks about it. If you go to Charlotte Tilbury's uh, Facebook page or YouTube page, obviously she's always using it. And it seems like it always makes her client skin look so youthful, so glowing, like so ready for makeup. Uh, my problem with this stuff is that it actually kind of irritates my face. I don't know what it what is in it, but it, it almost makes my face itch. It also doesn't make my face feel hydrated. It's almost like the product just sits on top of my skin and doesn't move, if that makes sense. Um, it also doesn't really make my skin look that much more youthful or glowing. I mean, I know it's not supposed to do that technically, but... You know, this stuff is $100 a jar. This is actually a mini jar, and I'm glad that this was actually a gift. Um, so I'm glad that I did not invest the full $100 for the Magic Cream because, honestly, it, it, was, it irritated my skin. It just sat on top of my skin, and I will use it every now and then. If it's just sitting on my desk, um, I'll put a little bit on if I really need it, but I try not to use a lot because I find if I use like even just a full, you know, just scoop on my finger, something about it just kind of irritates my skin and I, I want to almost scratch my face if that makes sense. So this I just, I don't understand. I did have a subscriber tell me in my last Charlotte Tilbury video that the magic cream formula is different in the U.S. than it is in the U.K. She said that the formulas are totally different, so maybe the U.K. version is better. I don't know. I really hated to have to put this product into this category because I love the brand behind this product, but I think that there could have been a better product development behind this particular uh, makeup item, and it is the ColourPop Ultra Matte Liquid Lipsticks. Uh, this is in the shade Limbo, but I have several colors, and I've heard that they have now reformulated their liquid lipsticks to be a little bit more comfortable on the lips. However, the first generation, let's just call it that, of uh, the Ultra Matte Liquid Lipsticks were so drying on the lips, it almost felt like cement on your lips. I thought the Kat Von D Liquid Lipsticks were drying, and then I, I got these in, Literally, I love the colors. The colors are beautiful, but the formula is so uncomfortable on your lips. There's no way a person could go an entire day wearing this on their lips. And if you can, props to you because it is literally just like cement on your lips. It almost impairs my speech. It, it's really odd. But it's really unfortunate because I want to use these a lot in tutorials, but then I know I'm just going to go to my bathroom and take it off as soon as I'm done because it is so unbearable on the lips. Uh, but I have watched a couple videos where people have said that ColourPop is now reformulating these. So let's hope that's true because the colors are stunning. I love ColourPop as a brand, but the formula of these just, they got to be improved. They just have to be. All right, the last products I'm going to talk about, it's actually just one product, but I have a few, is the Makeup Geek Blushes. And I, again, Makeup Geek is a brand that I love. Love Makeup Geek eyeshadows, but I have three of the blushes. This is not a blush. This is a MAC Accentuate Powder. But these three blushes uh, are Makeup Geek blushes. I have Spellbound, Honeymoon, and Romance. Um, again, it was a product I felt like I was very underwhelmed with when I used the formulas, in my opinion, are very chalky, almost powdery, and the color payoff is not that great. I swatched 
uh, all three shades on my hand. This one is Orgasm, so don't mind it. But these are the three shades that I have, and the color payoff is not great with them. These are actually pretty old. I've had these for a few years. I don't know if she has reformulated the blushes, but I just never fell in love with these. But still to this day, I see people using them, and they're like, makeup eat blushes, so good. And, I mean, they're okay, but they're not that good. All right, guys, so those were the products I have in my collection that I feel like are a little bit overrated. And I feel like there's a lot of replacements that could trump these but yet people still continue to rave about these products and I understand everything works differently for everyone I get that in my opinion though these are just like things that need to be fixed or enhanced and I don't understand why they are just highly raved about 24 7 so those were the products please do not freak out if you loved the products I talked about uh, these were just the ones that I felt like and I don't have many like those were literally it out of my entire makeup collection right now Those what five or six products were the only ones that I feel like the hype needs to Does need to be here needs to be here or maybe here. I don't know So I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions for me or requests for videos in the future Feel free to leave them down below and I guess I will see you guys in my next one. Bye